Okay, now moving on to skin, hair, and nails. The first thing we wanna do is inspection, specifically with the skin. We're looking, number one, for color. So this includes cyanosis, pallor, or pallor, even jaundice and erythema, which is just basically that redness of the skin. Now we're gonna get into specifics of this, but let's just do a general overview. For general inspection, we're just seeing if both sides are basically symmetrical. So does the right match the left? And we're using the body as its own control. So we're looking for general pigmentation that is uniform throughout the body that matches the client's genetics as well. So the real big question is, does their skin color match their ethnicity? And we're looking for dark or bright spots if it doesn't. So typically somewhere in between your mom and dad's skin tone is something we're looking with the client. Now everyone should have a lighter color on their palms as well as the soles of the feet and even the lips. And as a general rule, everyone has pink undertones. So it shows good circulation and good oxygenation. And usually we find that in the lips right there. Now, in terms of pallor or even pallor, how do you say that? <laughs> uh, pallor, potato, potato. Potato, potato. What is this? What is pallor, pallor? So pallor is gonna be paleness to the skin tone. Okay. And so lots of times, you know, someone can have lighter color skin, but we're still looking for those pink undertones like in the lips, mucous membranes, palms of the hands, nail beds. But if they have paleness, then that could indicate anemia. It could also indicate that they have or paleness pallor, mm -hmm. or it could also indicate early issues with oxygenation. The key term right there is early oxygenation issues. So basically early hypoxia. So you guys wanna write that down. Pallor, we have less oxygen, or basically it shows early hypoxia here. Now what about erythema? So remember the R in erythema is R for redness, right? So with this, we see this with fever, even infection, you know, when things get really red and warm, as well as DVTs where one side of the leg has a clot in it and blows up into like a little baby cow, right? Absolutely. Now, when do we see cyanosis and what is that? So cyanosis basically means blue. Okay. So if someone is cyanotic, then we get worried about late hypoxia. Mm -hmm. So that'd be later issues with oxygenation. So someone that's gonna be a higher priority because if they're not breathing or they're breathing poorly, they'll get that blue color of the skin okay. where we're lacking those pink undertones. Got it. So this is late signs of hypoxia, right? So very, very late sign is the cyanosis. So just think cyanosis is we don't want it. Just think of the no there. Now, if someone has darker skin tones, then we say it's ashen gray. And a lot of darker skinned individuals won't typically look blue or basically cyanotic. So except in the lips, that's why we always say like bend down that lip and really see and look for those pink undertones, mm -hmm. as well as the tongues and even the mucous membrane, it may still look slightly blue. Hey there, nursing student, listen up. Did you know only 20% of our videos are here on YouTube? You're missing out on over 900 videos not on YouTube, plus 500 visual study guides that follow along every video and a massive quiz bank to test your knowledge. All neatly organized in our new app. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. Now for a practice question. A nurse receives a report that a client has new onset of peripheral cyanosis. Where should the nurse assess to detect the presence of this? The fingers and the toes. Yes, this is correct. Peripheral cyanosis is usually a local problem with manifestations of cyanosis. A blue-tinged color skin, or basically blue-tinged color to the skin, caused by problems resulting in that vasoconstriction. And changes in color around the mouth, chest, and even abdomen is what's called central cyanosis. All right, now moving on to jaundice. This is the yellow color of the skin, and it typically indicates liver function issues. So can you explain a little bit more about jaundice? 